Hi guys. Okay, so I've got an unboxing to do. Um, Y'all know this, and uh, so um, I got this Thursday. I think no, Wednesday. Yeah. Anyway, but I've had one hell of a busy week, so I only got until uh, now to do the review. So. So here it is. So it's obviously I've torn, already torn in it, so it can't be a full unbox, but it's a semi unbox. But it's also a review, so here we go. So I got a package from Vampire, and uh, well, we'll just kind of work our way up. So one of the first things they sent me was uh, this very cool bumper sticker. Um, I think he knows me pretty well to know that that's that fits my personality pretty well. Um, for those of you that may not know, this is um, part of a thing from Die Hard that goes back, God, probably 12 years or something. I mean, it's yeah, and uh, <clears throat> you'll see the start of the M and the start of the O. So just imagine where that would go so there's an F later on about halfway down just thought I'd let you know but uh, but yeah this was one of uh, what McLean said and uh, yeah it was it was a great guy moment so yeah I, <laughs> kudos on the bumper sticker it's awesome man it's awesome <laughs> you got me figured out you got me pegged pretty good um, the next thing he sent me was a uh, dual pad custom stamp kit. Um, I've never used one of these really. I, I never have. So I'll uh, try to figure it out. But uh, it's pretty cool. So thanks. Um, I'm definitely going to have to figure out how to use this whole deal. So I've never had one of these. I've never used anything actually that would be perfect for me though because I've got horrible handwriting I do I I just I, I have horrible handwriting so one of the things that annoys me more than anything is addresses so if I don't have to write my addresses on an envelope anymore that's awesome so thanks a lot seriously thank you it, that's the one thing that I hate to write the most I think is addresses anyway <clears throat> moving on so uh, then I got a few things in here that are pretty cool um, he sent some metal cards uh, Bakugan I believe is what he what they are called I'm not sure I I didn't uh, get much of a chance to have this kind of stuff growing up so you know it was kind of survival and you lived how you lived you know um, but only later after figuring uh, after Primal Punch said something about it um, that I realized that uh, there's like a magnet at the bottom of this ball and if you throw that magnet on the yeah, it's supposed to stay there. But when it does, it automatically pops out into this little guy. So that's pretty cool. Um, never seen anything like that before, you know. So, you know, you can s take it off of there and snap it back up when it's a perfect little ball. And then you smack it on the card and it turns into that. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool little guy. It's, uh,. I have no idea what the markings on it or the card or anything or what that means so don't know but it's pretty cool so hey you know um, and then I got two of these uh, pink and red guys it's got a funny faces on them I have no clue but they look cool so hey you know they bring a little bit of flavor to it, so hey, <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? Um, and then we got some pretty cool little stickers with them. 
once again I have no idea I don't know if this is part of a game or what not in my own but it's cool nonetheless so hey you know there you go um on to the good stuff or the well the prizes I guess we'll, we should say first off is the spider coal ladybug okay um this little guy it's I love it I love this little blade it's sharper it's sharp as hell I ain't gonna lie like um something to cut um yeah here we go okay this is um Arby's napkin, so I'm not the greatest at cutting that kind of stuff. Here, there we go. Piece of paper. I'm gonna tell it crinkled. I mean, this little sucker, this sucker is just a little freaking razor, man. It's awesome. I believe, uh, well, I know that Pearl Punch did a video of shaving. Man, with this little blade, yeah, I could probably shave with it. I'm not kidding you. Actually. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it actually did shave me. I don't know if you can see it, but... You know what I'm saying? It literally. Oh. Anyway, yes, this little sucker will it'll shave you. So that's one of the things that I love about it. It has a very sharp edge, very keen. I also love the fact that it's very compact. So I mean, honestly, for thumb skinning or anything like that, that'd be perfect for um, self defense. You know, I've never been one, and I know this probably makes me a horrible guy, but uh, for me, a self-defense blade, it they start at three inches in general for me, except for the snag. That's that's there's other things going on with that, but other than that, if it's a if it's a standard blade shape, self-defense starts at about three inches for me that's just the way it is but anyway um and the way and the reason why three inches is three inches is the magic length for me is because um with the military and stuff it was not considered when i was in the navy it was not considered a knife if it was under three inches so you know something like this you could very easily walk onto base with no problem so but what I think this is absolutely the best for is a keychain knife. Now let's think about it. If you're going to have a knife on your keychain, you're going to want something light. This thing is super light. You're going to want something very sharp. You just saw. Okay? It'll shave me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's sharp. Um, the other thing that you want is something that has a smaller handle so it's not hard to wield and it's not getting in the way it kind of blends in with your keys and that's what this one does so my wife has her keys which yeah and if I put this on her keychain it literally disappears. Here's what I mean. I mean, you put that on our keychain, it just disappears. So, that's the great thing. And the other thing is that now she's got a small knife. So, if she needs to cut something, she can. It's on her keys, and it's good to go. What do I love about this more than anything? 
is because it gives me a way of ensuring that my wife always has a blade on her. Because I know I always do. And uh, sometimes that's the biggest thing, and uh, sometimes that's the hardest thing for us is to keep our women folk armed. Um, that's just the way of it. They, a lot of the time, they don't see the importance of being armed. And that alone makes it a challenge. So if you can ensure that they have something on their keychain or something that's always there and ready for them at a moment's notice and they don't even have to think twice about it, you're good. So that's something else that's really cool. So I also really like the box. I really like the box. It's just classy, man. It's just classy. Alright. So enough of that. Let's get into the Phoenix. Okay. First off. The Phoenix came with about every accessory that you would need for it. And I'm not kidding you. Um, it came with extra O-rings. It came with a lanyard. And it also came with a with the nylon holster okay I have to say that this ballistic nylon holster is actually better than the holster than the shirt them for the surefire and yes I brought the uh, I brought the surefire out for comparison so <clears throat> that will actually have be actually that will actually be able to compare apples to apples um, the holster for the surefire it's this plastic shroud that fits over the Surefire. That's all well and good, but the problem is, is that it's not very adjustable, and when you're carrying the Surefire around inside that holster, it rattles. And if it rattles, it's bad, okay? Uh, with the ballistic nylon, it doesn't rattle. There's, no, there's nothing for it to rattle, so kudos, Phoenix on the holster. Um, the Surefire light did not come with a lanyard. Granted you could bring you could make one easily enough and I would out of bank line if it were truly necessary. Uh, the Phoenix already did. It did take a little bit of effort to get it threaded through but on the other hand it works I'm happy. Okay. Um, Surefire light on the pocket clip. The pocket clip is where it's at. There is no modification. It is the way it is. With the Phoenix, you can modify the pocket clip. You can have it facing this way with the light end up. You can have it facing this way. You could invert it. You could do it just by any other play, way that you want. Because right back here is another section that will accept the pocket clip. Okay? Let me try this. Yeah, there you go. That will accept the pocket clip. So, for the pocket clip, I gotta call, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Kudos, Phoenix. Um, the next thing the batteries. Phoenix flashlight didn't come with any batteries. But I could find them easily enough because they were laying in my cabinet. Double A's. Okay. So battery available availability and findability. Especially if we're in a SHTF type situation or whatever where you're gonna need a light and really need one. Yeah, battery's are gonna be a huge thing. The only thing that I've the biggest thing that I've ever had a problem with Surefire on is that they use, or at least mine, uses the A123s. They're great batteries, they're powerful batteries, but you almost have to stockpile a separate set of batteries for this light, and you can't really use photo batteries for this either. So you're pretty much relegated to Surefire batteries and Surefire batteries along with this. However, with the Phoenix, I can run off with double A's. So for battery type and availability, once again, kudos, Phoenix. 
Okay, uh, overall size. Well, you'll see that the Phoenix is a little bit longer. It's also a little bit thinner. Okay. So, that's neither here nor there. The crown of the Surefire is deeper than that of the Phoenix. So the Surefire would be a better impact weapon for using the crown in that type of a situation. So for the crown, Crudo is Surefire over Phoenix. On the other hand, um, the longer length allows it to be much easier to use, easier and manipulated. And honestly, I feel better with this in my pocket than uh, Surefire. Because with the Surefire, the great thing about this being in the pocket is, is that, you know, it's there, but on the other hand, sometimes it's a little bit too big. It's just, it gets in the way with the keys, and, and commonly I'll carry in a pocket carry. So that leaves one pocket for keys, change, light, all that stuff. So if that's the type of situation that I'm in, I'm going to want the one that's thinner. So kudos Phoenix for being thinner. So <clears throat> what about beams? Surefire. You have the tactical light. And then you have the the five lumens utility light. Okay, uh, that's your choices with the Surefire. Simplicity of the beams. Gotta give it to the Surefire. The Phoenix, you've got the starting beam, and then you've got to adjust it to varying levels. Okay, apparently that's the tactical light version. And then when you cycle through, there's the strobe. And then it'll go to a SOS. And now it'll come back to normal. So, uh, beams for the Phoenix. Problematic. I think they've uh, tried to do a little bit too much too quick with the with the beams on the Phoenix. I think they would have been better served to, if you want the strobe, fine, have the strobe. Don't go with the SOS. The SOS is a bit much. You know, if, uh, if you're a survivalist person and you haven't learned uh, Morse code, you know, that's... Uh, that's something that you should uh, at least Morse code for the SOS. Not saying you should know memorize the entire Morse code and be a, you know a stellar guy at it, but if you just know if you just know that or that rhythm, okay, that's SOS right there for you. So again. Just know that. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Okay? So, um, that's Morse code for you. Outside of that, um, you know, outside of the beams being sometimes problematic, this this will be uh, in my EDC over the Surefire. I love the Surefire for its powerfulness, and if I'm in a situation where I may need to use this as a tactical light, then yeah, the Surefire will always be there because it's very simple. First shot, I have high power. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to mess with anything. I'm not, you know, I'm 100% sure that when I hit this button the first time, it's going to have a powerful beam that's going to disorient my opponent. Okay? The Phoenix, I'm not exactly sure with that. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, depending on what it's set on. And will it remember what it's set on? It says it does, but eh with the surefire and out. On the other hand, the Phoenix, easier to get batteries for. And every other way other than 
the consideration from in every other way other than the consideration that the Surefire was made for. I gotta say, the Phoenix LD22 is better. So, uh, yeah. I've gotta say, this is probably, uh, yeah, this is probably the best light that I have overall for an SHTF situation because when I run out of battery power for my Surefire, I've got a very fancy waterproof container. Whereas with the Phoenix, if I run out of batteries, there's a good chance that I can find more, barter for more, um, you know, maybe I can find them in a in a storage facility or whatever, you know, however I happen to run across them, whereas Surefire not so much, so, anyway, that's about it, so, uh, thank you Wampire again for this contest, thank you for everything, um, it was an awesome contest. I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you for sending the little guys and all this other stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, and I really, really got a kick out of this bumper sticker. <laughs> it's awesome. So anyway, thanks. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your time. Defend your homes wisely.